Hello, everyone. I'm Dana Perino, along with Kimberly Guilford, Eric Bowling, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. A major shakeup in the first weeks of the Trump administration. National Security Advisor Mike Flynn resigned last night after only 24 job. A load of new developments to tell you about today. Let's begin with the explanation from the White House of what prompted General Flynn to down. We got to a point not legal issue, based on a trust issue where the level of trust between the president and General Flynn had eroded to the point where he felt he had to make a change. The president was very concerned that General Flynn had misled the vice president and others. He was also very concerned in light of sensitive subjects dealt with by that position of national security advisors like China, North Korea, and the Middle East, that the president must have complete and unwavering trust for the person in that position. Chief White House Correspondent John Roberts joins us now with the very latest on this big scandal for the administration. John, we're just 25 days in. How did yeah, the day can, go? <laughs> can, can you imagine? Well, it was a difficult one, a question for the White House, which spent the entire day deflecting an onslaught of attacks from Democrats who insisted that Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, the National Security Advisor, must have done something illegal in those telephone conversations for him to get fired. And they also wanted to know, did the president know about it? And, and even did the president order Flynn to do that, and to talk about sanctions in those calls? The White House dismissed the idea that Flynn had done anything illegal by talking with Russia's ambassador to the United States about sanctions, insisting the White House counsel's office undertook a thorough review of the matter and interviewed Flynn a number of times about it. Sean Spicer today said what cost Flynn his job was not coming clean about those conversations and misleading Vice President Mike Pence about them just before Pence went on television to talk about it all. The White House would not say, and I asked this question specifically, what evidence the White House counsel, Don McGahn, weighed to determine that there was nothing illegal in those phone conversations. But the FBI is known to have transcripts of electronic intercepts of those conversations. Now, the White House is hoping to make this all blow over quickly by announcing a strong replacement for Flynn. The number one candidate right now is retired Navy SEAL Vice Admiral uh, Robert Harward. He was the former deputy commander at CENTCOM under General James Mattis, who you know is running the Pentagon. He was named the honor man during SEAL training. This guy's got a reputation as being a real tough cookie. The honor man is the SEAL candidate during training who shows so much grit and tenacity and strength that he inspires other cadets, other candidates, to keep going where they might otherwise have quit. So the White House is saying, if you're looking for a tough guy, he's your guy. All right. Well, the White House will probably have to answer a lot of other questions. Thank you, John. We'll um, keep following this story. We're going to have Catherine Harridge later in the hour to talk about the FBI uh, questioning of, of Mike Flynn. In the meantime, we'll talk about how this all went. Um, Eric, one of the things is the timeline. And so you had this first... Uh, broke in the news by uh, columnist David Ignatius on January 12th. Um, that's also when you start to find out that the Justice Department goes to the White House and says, you might have a potential problem here, but nothing happens until it becomes a little more public yesterday afternoon, then it all happened so quickly. It happened very quickly. In fact, on Friday, Thursday night, I think the Washington Post pu published the nine, the fact that they had nine sources confirming what David Ignatius had talked about. Um, I, I mentioned yesterday that it was less about what General Flynn is accused of doing and more about the fact that he misled the vice president, let the vice president go out there on the, on the Sunday shows. I think it was the Sunday shows and allowed him to think that there was no conversation and allowed him to say that he had no conversation about the sanctions mm -hmm. uh, with the Russians about the sanctions if you listen to the press conference today it was an amazing press conference you learned a few things number one uh, Sean Spicer said that uh, General Flynn it was it was uh, he called it evolving and eroding trust and it was all built around the trust he also said that uh, it was misled he had misled the vice president and others he was asked about it later and he said including himself Sean Spicer um, he said that the president did not instruct Flynn to discuss the sanctions I think that's very important that shields uh, the president, at least for now, from any sort of uh, I implication into, into this discussion. And he also said, and I think this is brand new, that the president asked for Flynn's resignation. Now, it, it had been out there that Flynn w w resigned, but this says that the president asked for his re uh, resignation. And I think that's good. So I I'll sum up with saying that, that um, it's the process happening, and it, unfortunately, it's happening very, very early in the administration. Um, so, Kimberly, on, on this question of <laughs> asked for the resignation or accepted it reluctantly, which was the initial posture mm -hmm. late last night, which was 
that was a long news day. Mm -hmm. yesterday up until 11 p.m. or so like getting breaking news yes. before I was at the dog show um, asked for or accepted do you think it matters in terms of it showing the president being in control of the staff yeah I think the word choice semantics do matter in this situation and at first and you saw some the tweet from Flynn basically saying he doesn't mind if he's being a, you know the scapegoat that essentially he's falling on the sword I think the whole problem here is that if he had told the truth that I think he still would have been backed up by the administration and by the president at least that's what they're hanging the hat on because in terms of the law I agree with Charles Kreinheimer like I said yesterday that there is no specific law that was broken in terms of the conduct, but it was the cover-up like we see in so many situations that really was the problem here. The coffin, and you saw also earlier when his choice denied security clearance by the CIA for the uh, NSC's um, senior director for Africa. And that was sort of the writing was on the wall, like, okay, something's going on here. And then I was hearing reports about three people that were going to be coming in, Petraeus in particular, um, one of them at the time coming to do an interview this week. And that was already like three, maybe four days ago. So it was kind of like the writing was on the wall, I think. Um, but. Uh, what I'm hearing is that the Petraeus is not going to take the position or... It looks like John wanted. Roberts had a little, maybe a little information Harward, on that yeah. about Harvard. Um, let's take a listen, Bob, to the Democrats who are demanding more information on this and investigations and all the rest. This obviously begs a lot of questions about whether those conversations between Flynn and the Russian ambassador were sanctioned by the president himself or others in the administration, uh, and why those who were knowing did nothing to correct the record uh, when the American people were told otherwise. All of this merits investigation. Do you hear the silence? This is the sound of House Republicans conducting no oversight of President Trump. We are a fight in a fight for the soul of our democracy. Deadly deadly serious uh, what's happening now and there's a chance to write the course but right now this is a raging example of a president who is incompetent reckless and strategically incoherent there is actually an investigation bob that the senate intelligence committee was already conducting in a bipartisan way about the russia or the potential for Russia connections, but do you think the Democrats have something to ride well, home here listen, on? You know, I never take any uh, solace in this. I mean, when I, somebody goes like that, is it, you know, he's a human being, he's done a lot of time serving his country. On the other hand, uh, it seems to me that Comrade Trump is spending more time worrying about vetting people coming in from Syria than he's vetting his own White House staff. I mean, it, you know, the guy, uh, this is fundamental. is he's a three-star general, Bob. So what? Flynn's a three-star three general. So he's not yeah, to be but vetted? With perfect service. I mean, what well, are you going to vet the, about? What, just, uh, can I just finish what I'm saying here? The yeah, FBI, I mean, the FBI investigated him. On General the Flynn, F the FBI, or vetting of General Flynn. I mean. uh, the, the FBI talked to him in January. He must have known by then that they had the tapes of the conversations. As any idiot would have known if they were talking to this. Uh, and who's leaking all of that, by the way, to the who press? Who cares? Well, it's inappropriate. It's What's a matter of national about security. It, it shouldn't guy, be leaked to the press. It, it, listen, the last time anything this serious happened was was it, it was an account. What, what, what am I trying to say? Iran country. Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, Ali North gave information out, uh, which was inappropriate. Um, but the question about whether Flynn should be investigated, there's no question about that. The bigger question is, in a White House staff like that, a lot of people knew this. A lot of people knew it before the vice president went on TV, so somebody screwed up. A lot of people screwed Who up. Who do you think knew it? I think the president of the United States knew it. Well, we don't, well, we don't know that. We don't know but, that, Bob. Uh, well, that, that's all right. What do you think about the leaks issue well, and, okay. and the blaming of the leakers? What kills me is, okay, I've been fired three times, and whenever you leave a position, you still leave behind loyalists. When I go from one job to the other, there are at least two or three people that are still there at the company who will do whatever I ask. And so what you have in You're that White House... You're a powerful man. No, at the White House, you have Obama loyalists who stayed behind, and, and they are the ones that are responsible. In my mind, you've got, the Demo you've got uh, Democrats, you've got deep state Democrats that are doing the leaking, I think. So what 
uh, Trump failed to do was he's got he's got to figure out the main loyalists to the previous guy and take his head off. I mean, literally, like move him to Nome, Alaska. The fact is, his one of his Secret Service agents could be Valerie Jarrett in a fake mustache, and he doesn't know it. He's got to find out who those people are and then get back to policy. Right now, Trump is being nipped at the heels by a pack of dogs, and those dogs are the Democrats, the deep state Democrats, uh, uh, different agencies. Um, it Obama seems loyalist, it yeah. seems worse than the past because when there's similar scandals among Democrats, there is no pack of dogs. There is no media chasing Obama over the IRS, over Solyndra, over Obamacare. There's only exactly. one dog. Fox News was the only you, dog. You but now you Bill have Clinton and his and his dalliance in the in the Oval Office didn't have a pack of dogs on it. After it became obvious, I mean, he had to go to great great. It took 25 extent. days for this to be obvious, and they knew it six days in. Not in fact, they knew it before that. Well, they, that, there's no indication of that, Bob. You're speculating. No, that. I'm no, not. The, C the, the Obama are. CIA yeah, director are. said, went to the White House and Justice said, Department. you should pass this. Uh, Sean Spicer today said the president had no knowledge of this. Had no yeah, but knowledge Sean of Spicer's this. got about as much credibility. Oh, as. stop it. Now you're like making leaps and bounds. Here, I, can well, I just, Sean, excuse can, me. But here's what they need to do. Honestly, the president, the, the White House, look, you get a pass. It's been a month. Uh, you're, you're an outsider. You're not, you don't know the ins and outs of D.C. You don't know the ins and outs of working with the Intel Department. You get a pass, but it's time to clean house, number one. Plug the leaks. Don't talk about plugging leaks. Plug the damn leaks and then go full steam ahead with the agenda that the American people elected you guys on. Go for it. And remember, your the Democrats aren't your friends. Half the Republicans aren't your friends. And certainly the media aren't your friends. So knowing that, you got the tall test, but the, we, but what about we the, and they elected you for just that. Just a little bit of pushback. What about doing the right thing from the beginning? Because uh, General Flynn was the head of the uh, defense intelligence agency so it's not like he didn't know what the intel world was like in washington dc i don't think that's a fair excuse again, for again, lying again. to the vice president right. about what he did well, again so what he and did, they knew about that what he did weeks ago probably was has been done by every single incoming transition team oh. of every uh, oh, oh, come on. how do you make a blanket uh, statement uh, like that you pick up a phone call and you pick up a phone and say hey uh, here's our five of our here's five people we want to have a this relationship this is the national with, security advisor to the united states he's gone in 25 days what does that tell you I, it, it, it tells about you, incompetent it White tells House. you that yes, he shouldn't have done what he did. But I will also tell you that if if there was full transparency on other administrations, you'd have the same thing going on. Again, about it's not you know, what he did. You can't. It's that he he lied to the vice president or mis misled the vice president where he got himself in trouble. He a lot of other people in that White House knew from the Justice and Department. And if he said, "Look, I did this," the but you know what? I did president. it in the best interest of the American people. Do you think he'd be fired? Calling no, the about damn right he would. Wait, no, how, could, no. how is called? I mean, how is calling the Russians look, about sanctions Crowd, look, in the interest of our, the American Our good people. friend Charles Cronhammer agrees that it's highly unlikely that this would be deemed illegal. Right. I'm saying that I don't think an excuse about not understanding Washington is fair in this case in that General Flynn, who served his country admirably for many years and was the head of the DIA, doesn't know how the intel community works? Of course, I, I didn't of suggest course. he didn't know how the intel community works. I suggest that when he lied to or misled Vice President, that's where his mistake no, was. No, he made. lied to the Vice President. Right. And uh, he, he lied to a lot of other people, and so did a lot of people in the White House who knew it from the Justice Department. They were told. I will say this, though. Trump is facing a standard that an inexperienced senator from Illinois never had to face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, he had the media. He never had a good point. Uh, I mean, Benghazi is a great like example. Are you kidding days. me? No, I'm, I go back to the pack of dogs theory. The pack of dogs chose not to chase President Obama over his scam. In particular, on Benghazi, when there were yeah. calls for yeah. investigation yeah. and a hearing, the Democrats yeah. and Cummings yeah. and Prediction so, to, locked arms and if, said, "We're not doing if it." If I hear. You know, what did he know and when did he know it? One more time, I'm going to throw up because no one ever said that about Obama, about Benghazi. Nobody said, what did he know? When did he know? When we knew it wasn't a video. What but did now he about know this, and when did he know it? Yeah, everybody says that now and it's did just such watch? garbage. Oh, All you right. want me to throw Keep up? Keep saying it. I can projectile, Bob. Can you throw up on it? All right. Welcome back. The left and the mainstream media are all in all-out hysteria over President Trump's attempt to secure our borders and deport illegal immigrants who pose a threat to our safety. Nancy Pelosi calls the president's agenda, quote, hateful and destructive. Hmm. Chuck Schumer calls the recent ICE raids deeply disturbing. Jorge Ramos, a so-called journalist from Univision, was also very upset about the raids when he appeared on Hannity last night. Do you agree with me? Should every criminal illegal immigrant be thrown out of this country? Every one. If they committed a crime, Any a crime. real crime, absolutely, absolutely. Good. Well, the, the problem is how do you find a crime?
Well, how do you define a criminal? Perhaps the Homeland Security Department can help you with the definition, Jorge. 75% of those rounded up in the raids were murderers, rapists, or committed other illegal acts. Ramos, in his dramatic style, went on to argue our president is tearing families apart. The vast majority of undocumented immigrants in this country are not criminals, are not terrorists, are not gang members. Now it's my turn. Here's, go ahead. Guadalupe Garcia, Guadalupe Garcia, she's been in this country for 22 years. Look what Donald Trump did. This is what Donald Trump did. Well, it's very dramatic, Jorge. Uh, yesterday, I, I um, talked about a political article from January 4th, 2016. Here it is. It's entitled, Obama Administration Kicks Off Family Deportation Raids. And Greg, I'll just read this one line for you right here. This past weekend, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, engaged in concerted nationwide enforcement operations to take into custody and return at a greater rate adults who enter this country illegally with children. Yeah, let's see. Uh, the Jorge and the Nancy Pelosi's of the world rely on our amnesia or our stupidity to not remember the past. But it's it, it, the great thing about Google is you can just find these things and yes. make them look like idiots. They also operate, as you can see, on emotional and not factual uh, mm -hmm. information. But here's what I don't get. What I don't get. If you are fine with illegals who are criminals being here and free, then you should be OK with citizens citizens who are criminal and free. If I were an American felon right now, I'd be pretty pissed right. off. I would actually file a lawsuit saying, if there are sanctuary cities for criminals, why am I in jail? Right. Why right. should I be in, uh, that is actually an excellent legal argument and I will represent you for free. Okay, oh, well, that would also be another crime to, yes. to, to go to jail. Yeah. practice um, law when you're not an attorney, but charming. I, I will represent myself, thank you. And, and your thoughts, either one of you. Well, somewhere? as Bob pointed out yesterday, um, the raids that were taking place over the past week were planned by the Obama administration and then carried out by the Trump administration. So to me, that shows a good transition from one administration to the next. And so I don't know if uh, Mr. Ramos would have complained had it been a third Obama term. I would also point out that, um, on the other hand, stories do matter. And so on, from a social media standpoint, um, what you might not see on your TV screen right now, just know that underneath all of that, there are stories that are going around, whether true or not, about families such as this being ripped apart because of these raids, and that can have a powerful effect on the uh, populace. Robert, one of the other things that they got into an argument about last night, or Jorge Ramos and Hannity, was whether or not illegals commit crime at a higher rate than the general population. And they do. We did a little research. Illegal immigrants representing only three and a half percent of the country, the population. Right. right. Mm -hmm. When you take out immigration offenses, they account for 14 percent of offenders sentenced for federal offenses. Yeah. I'm not so almost four the, times the rate yeah. as the general. Population. Well, you know, think about how many of them are in the drug business. I mean, they, they, they come over the border to do drugs. And so they're automatically criminals. But, uh, you know, I'm glad to see you finally discovered something positive about Obama on his deportation, because you always said he didn't deport anybody. Here's the problem. And Nancy Pelosi made have done one thing right today, and that is that and then the Hispanic uh, Say that community, again. What? She may have done one thing one right. Thing right. Yeah. right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump my own party here in a second, but uh, the fact is that in the Hispanic community, the Republicans do not need this. Republicans have started for now for eight years have tried to break into the Hispanic community, and this is the very kind of thing that every activist Hispanic is going to take that picture of that, and you're exactly right. You're going to see that picture in other families, and it's going to just it, it's going to scare put, the Hispanic community. See that picture right there? Yeah. That's Jay Johnson. That's Obama's secretary. No, of I understand Jerry. that. That's not the point. That's the who point started is that, this program. I understand right. that. But the point is that right now, the Hispanic community, who doesn't like Trump anyway, is going to be, they're not going to give them 15% next time. They'll give them three. Casey, where you come down These this. take months of preparation to do these large-scale raids. This is President Obama's raid. So if Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi want to whine and complain, then they should pick up the phone and call him. They could also pick up the phone and actually get the facts and the information because they are the only people terrifying the illegal immigrants by saying that Trump is doing something that is illegal, that he's ripping apart families. And they can do all their little stage phony stuff like Jorge Ramos did, ripping it in half. But it's just not an accurate reflection of who is the basis are, are of this raid. To Obama for getting rid of these criminals? Yeah. Quick thought. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, I just don't know what they expect awesome ICE agents to do. What are you supposed to hand out lollipops to the gangbangers? Let them do their jobs. Jay Johnson said this should come in as meals. no surprise. He said, I've said publicly for months that individuals who constitute enforcement priorities, including families and unaccompanied children, will be removed. Mm -hmm. Jay Johnson. 
So as California's Oroville Dam is in crisis, I wonder, where was Jerry Brown? Sorry, let me rephrase that. Where the hell was Jerry Brown? <laughs> was he watching the Grammys with a box of Kleenex? Hillary Clinton's more visible than this Yeti, and she doesn't run anything but a lame Twitter account. Imagine if out-of-town Brown were a Republican. During the Flint water crisis, everyone wanted the Republican governor to go to jail. But no one's doing that to Jer Jer Binks, which is odd when you consider officials were warned about problems with the dam years ago, which is why Trump should get ahead of this. Have people on the ground, even if it's to hand out blankets. As Rahm Emanuel once said, never let a crisis go to waste. And Trump's saving the asses of incompetent bureaucrats who put sanctuaries before security. It's just too rich. Especially since the press already blames Donald Trump anyway. You got to check out this headline. It reads, the Oroville Dam Crisis Exposes the Flaws in <laughs> Trump's Infrastructure Plan. Only in a left-wing loony bin like California can a massive disaster that's been building for years under bloated, incompetent state governance be blamed on a guy who's been in power for 24 days? What's next? How Trump's hair incited Pearl Harbor? <laughs> the good news is authorities have lifted the evacuation order uh, for 200,000 residents, Dana, so they're safe to return home. So disaster might be averted, but I still admire the fact that they're blaming Trump's future actions. This is like a political media version of Minority Report. Immediately you saw calls for th <laughs> that the wall is ridiculous when you actually have projects here at home that you need. But guess what? Just last week, California submitted to the federal government a $100 billion, with a B, dollar wish list of infrastructure projects to trump for federal funding so they want their sanctuary cities uh -huh. they want to be left alone but they really want federal government money to pay for things like oh you could go down this whole list but one of them being high-speed rail yes high-speed rail now uh, eric it uh, was projected in like 2008 at 33 billion now it's up to 80 billion and it's still on blocks yeah <laughs> and what uh vice president biden loves that idea yes right? exactly um and what was it going from san francisco to la is that what was yeah 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 and i think they've only built like three feet of it <laughs> <laughs> Not going, i was going just looking far. you forgot moonbeam and i was yes. just looking at where that came from mike royko chicago columnist in 1976 said that mr brown appeared to be attracting the moon moon <laughs> Beam votes. That is stuck with him for, for this, ever. For, for the, and they put him in again. And for good cause. I mean, did yeah. I did I get that straight? He's blaming Trump for this. No, no, it was a newspaper. No, it was a newspaper. Uh, I can't remember the name of the newspaper. Gotcha. But it was all, all clear on that. Uh, yeah. that, that thing now, though. <laughs> yes. Yes. Everything's okay. Everything's okay, Kimberly. So this is a state dam. So it's their responsibility, and they were derelict to say the least in maintaining it properly. They knew this was a problem, and they acted in conscious disregard mm -hmm. of a known risk and yeah. now they want a federal bailout on it which of course is going to have to happen if it's yeah, a disaster need. situation but it just goes to show you the gross mismanagement under the democrats and liberals which had a, a stronghold on this uh, state and they chose not to take care of this situation as usual with them like sanctuary cities it becomes everyone else's problem mm -hmm. bob still trump's fault right uh, no. Uh, the uh, first thing I would say, this is the tallest dam in America. Right. Uh, so one you probably should pay a little attention to. Exactly. That, uh, That's true. That f runoff that you see there is off of another dam for, for, for a spillover. Now, the thing that worries me about this is that the Brown, whatever you think about Brown and the bureaucrats and the rest of it, is that this is only one of hundreds and hundreds of dams across True. this country that are eroding rapidly. Now, you can try to blame Democratic liberal bureaucrats for all that, but most of it has been because of financial constraints. And states cut back, particularly states where there's a lot of uh, Republican legislators who don't like infrastructure spending. And they, in fact, it, it, Trump's infrastructure idea is a good one, but he's got opposition from his own party on the Hill. It's not the Democrats. Wait, say that again, the first part of that. Trump's <laughs> infrastructure spending idea is a Good, good one. one. Yeah, it is a good one. There you go. Look, like anytime you spend a trillion dollars on you. infrastructure, you could do that. The, uh, no, I, I think it's an important thing to do because it's, this is an example. It's just going to be more and more and more. All right. And uh, you remember when the when the we got to go, Bob, <laughs> going to Oakland. We got to go. You know who never? I had no idea that Bob was an expert on dams. Well, he says damn a lot. Damn expert. All right. Oh, a series of leaks led leak. to the resignation of Mike Flynn as national security advisor. The question is, who's leaking the leaks? A live report ahead. Is the chairman of the board. Back now to the resignation of Mike Flynn as national security advisor. It leaks out of Washington suggest Flynn tried to cover up talks with Russia before the Trump administration took power. President Trump says the leaks are the real story here. 
Flynn himself agrees. More now from Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Harris. Hey, Catherine, we all got a lot of questions for you, but let me just start with this. Is he, do the president really believe that the story here is the leaks when you got something as big as this? I mean, well, it, OK, I, I get the question. I certainly can't speak for the president, but I can tell you people who work within the intelligence community are raising the alarm over these leaks because, Bob, this information comes from some of the most sensitive programs. This is called compartmented information. It involves sources and methods. A monitoring the ambassador of a foreign country and a conversation with an American citizen, that has to go to an intelligence court to unmask who the American is. So this is really high level stuff and it would have to have been approved by the Obama administration because these phone calls went down in December. So leaking that is a very big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eric, you got a question? Yeah, Catherine, so these oversight committees, obviously there's going to be some oversight committees, probably both Senate and House. Um, mm -hmm. They don't really um, we don't really learn very much from these things. Seems to be a lot of congressmen and a lot of senators <laughs> getting on TV. You've been watching too much cable news. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. Unless the intel community yeah. shows up and yeah. testifies, and by right. the nature, they can't. Am I right? Or what are we going to end up seeing? Well, there, you're right in the sense that there are really kind of two chapters uh, to this story. There's the very public chapter. Democrats today called for Mike Flynn to testify publicly about his connections and relationship with the Russians and those phone calls with the Russian ambassador. And then there's that investigation that goes on behind the scenes where you have people coming in and they testify in a classified setting. The public can't see that. And generally speaking, when that information is declassified and made available to people like you and me, it's heavily redacted or in some cases it's just not available because it reveals too much about sources uh, and methods. I think the thing to watch here is going to be uh, the FBI and the Department of Justice and whether there really is an aggressive prosecution of the individuals who were behind these leads. Because again, this is some of the most sensitive programs within the intelligence community. And once you start leaking information about them, you uh, burn the source. Dana? Well, Catherine, I had two questions that I think oh. are related. Huh. Uh, thanks, Greg. Um, <laughs> that, so the Washington Post reports that they have nine sources on this. So it's not necessarily, well, if, they're, if that's correct, then they don't just have one leak. There are uh -huh. multiple leaks. And President uh -huh. Obama got very frustrated about leaks and took <laughs> measures in order to try to stop them. Is there anything that the previous administration did to try to put in place mechanisms to identify leakers that could help President Trump track them down? Boy, uh, I'm not sure that there really is anything in place that's more robust than what we've seen uh, in the last uh, eight years. But I think you're on to something important here because the universe of, of, of people, of government officials who would have had access to this information uh, is extremely small. And when I say small, I'm talking about... Um, a national security advisor in the last White House, a deputy national security advisor like Ben Rhodes, the former CIA director John Brennan, uh, an intelligence official, uh, Mike Vickers, even the director of national intelligence, James Clapper. That's how high up the information would go. So it's actually not a big pool of individuals who would have access to that information and who would have made it public. Mm -hmm. You know, Catherine, many people are wondering, you know, uh, General Flynn, Flynn is a man of distinguished service over 30 years mm -hmm. uh, to this country, someone who was in charge of the intelligence agencies and also, you know, a counterterrorism expert. Um, seems to me that he wouldn't say something in one of those conversations that would jeopardize, uh, you know, the United States. It would be careful to know what would be appropriate and what wouldn't. Is your, your understanding there isn't going to be any fall through prosecution on General Flynn? There's no law that I'm aware of that's been broken or violated. Uh, so going forward, really, the focus of any investigation is just who leaked this inappropriately. Well, there's the leak, but I also, we were able to confirm tonight a story that was first reported in the New York Times, which is that General Flynn was interviewed uh, by the FBI about his conversations uh, and interactions with the Russians. As you know, as a career prosecutor, the jeopardy there is if there was a lie or a misstatement right. to the FBI. I'm not saying that that was the case, but that would be uh, a violation of the Martha Stewart law, USC 1001, which is lying to federal investigators. So that would be the jeopardy there, though there's the nothing, I think the that's correct. Itself. Yeah. So uh, there's nothing through my reporting that suggests uh, that was, in fact, the case. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, I, when I was in a company, uh, if you wanted to find out a leak, you told 10 people 10 specific different things. Oh, it's so uh, smart. Yes, and you waited <laughs> to see which one would mm -hmm. reach the media, and that would be your person, and then you would mm -hmm. fire them. That's how right. you did it. Well, they need you at White House. Please hurry there. <laughs> I'm, I will be there. I have short legs, so it'll take me a while to get there. Um, 
Take Catherine, summer. do you think this is an actual going to lead to a shakeup, or is it just one guy? I know that the Democrats mm -hmm. they're frothing right now. They think this is the beginning. Like he's mm -hmm. the. Uh, He's the amuse-bouche of the <laughs> right? meal. Um, yeah. I, I think based on our reporting today from Capitol Hill that uh, the damage may well go beyond uh, General Flynn. That's the view of the Democrats, and we may even get another name uh, this week, so I would stand by for that. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Catherine. You're I don't welcome. know what a moosh is, but <laughs> whatever know. it is. I don't We're going to lighten things up a little bit because it's Valentine's Day. I think Kimberly has some sweet treats to give us and all her former husbands. Special treats I hear don't go away. Love is in the air. Can you feel it? It's Valentine's Day. And you know what? It's time for Kimberly Food Court. Did I do it right that time? Yes, you did. Valentine's Day edition. Wow. Well, you all know how much I love food. So I thought I'd take a moment to investigate uh -huh, some of America's eating habits on this romantic holiday. So now there is apparently a big difference between what singles eat on Valentine's Day as opposed to couples. According to Grubhub, people in relationships are most likely to order Indian food or sushi today. Okay, so we've got some of that there in case people are confused. We have props. There's a lot of sharing. The singles turn to comfort food like potato wedges or a bacon and egg sandwich, which is incredibly funny because before the segment I started eating this. All right, Bob. Don't, don't. Oh, don't molest the sushi. All right. Are you gonna I'm eat not, the sushi? Don't molest the sushi. Also, can I tell them the cookies? I'll ask later. Oh. Okay, good. <laughs> there goes the sushi. Wow, Bob. Oh, there, goes the wow. there goes the Mercer Bob, sushi. Oh, yeah, take a lot, get a lot of that sushi stuff these? on there. Just Bye. take your time, Bob. Can you see these, please? <laughs> get ready Excuse to me. resuscitate. Excuse me. Cupcake Market is in New York City is selling Ryan Gosling and Justin Bieber cookies just in time for Valentine's Day, but that's not all. They do wait, custom wait. cookies. They, what? Should, they should guess which ones. Yeah. <laughs> well, who, they look like would... Bobsy twins. One has his mouth open. Like this the one, one is, uh, I think that's Bieber. And then that's Ryan Gosling. Okay, fine. So guess what, guys? I have a Valentine's present for each of you. And Bob, no, it's not a kiss. Dreamo. <laughs> <laughs> open it up, Greg. Open it up. Oh. Because you can get custom ones made. No way. I made one for myself too, which I think is kind of awesome. Oh. Dana. Okay. Cookies. Yeah, and they this look is great, guys. Holy crap! That does look like me. Uh, Eric, yeah. look. That's amazing. They need to put a little now, more salt in that pepper. So here's the interesting thing. I can't thing. even get a who camera thinks, angle from this guy. Who thinks theirs looks that like that? Like this. Anybody? Look this. this was good. Like pretty good. Okay, well, mine is Ainsley Earhart, I think, but with brown hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that looks, does it look a little like... Well, the like, thing is, I think they have to have... Sh they, they couldn't do the longer hair or we, else it'd be Is like that what it was? So they, good. You look like Marsha Brady. They made it... Marcia, Marcia. Um, so the off of our headshots. So we sent them in, and this is Megan Albano's idea, and Kyle went down and get it. Have you ever wondered what you taste like? <laughs> nope. Oh, okay. Kyle? I've Bob, always wanted to Bob eat my own Bob. face. Delicious. Uh, I don't, I don't, no, Delicious. That's, that. that's so cool. I'm going to keep doing this that. and Can take I it home. Can I those potato wedges? Mm. I'm a single guy. These are so I'm good. I'm a single guy. Thanks. Mm. Don't double dip, Bob, because I'm going to freak out on you. We I'm, taste pretty good. I'm saving this right? later. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, Kimberly. Well, You're welcome. Nice market. You. Very nice. Happy Valentine's Day. Very and yes, and thank, thank you to you. Cupcake it's Market good. for making these incredibly delightful and tasty likenesses of us. Why is it that on Valentine's Day we give things to people that make them fat and unattractive? What are you talking about? Why you should give them, you should give them, give them high protein, low carb stuff like raw elk. But sushi yeah. is a high protein. Is this But that's good? not a gift. You don't give people sushi. You give well, people you chocolates? Them, no, no. You go out for dinner, and then you're like, hey, want to go out for sushi? But you should be like aware of what their favorite food is. I think it would be sensitive. I'm, I'm having Chinese Are these food. little egg things Bob, are you? I just oh, saw oh, my that. God, are you choking? No. No, they're so. More or less giving you mouth to mouth, if so. No, 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 no. I'm out. I'll do the, uh, I'll do the, the chest pump. No. Mm -hmm. You got the mouth. Do you like it? You got the mouth. Bowling, what are you going to do for Valentine's Day? What did you get, Adrian? River Palm and having sushi. Oh, that's what yeah, literally going to do that. that was, okay, fantastic. Dana, what are you going to do? Don't um, hit your chest, We Bob. are going over to visit um, a little, are you a little okay? puppy. Yeah, I'm fine. It's the potatoes that are no good. What time is it now? Uh, <laughs> sour cream. Yeah. It's the potatoes fault. Okay. Get him away from him. Give him some more yeah. wrong the potatoes. Yeah. Are absolutely yeah. amazing. I got Peter a framed a picture of Jasper for Valentine's uh, Day. That's a surprise. <laughs> what did you get, Jasper? A framed I picture of Jasper? I think Jasper's getting a play date tonight. Oh, that's so cute. I'm going to fashion. I'm show. going to get a Big Mac. A little party. Okay. 
Is All that right, what they're Greg, calling Greg, it? What are you doing? And did you get uh, your beautiful wife, Elaine, anything? Have she you? does. Um, we do not celebrate Valentine's Day because. Oh, it's an American commercial. Yeah, so we do Women's Day, which is the communist mm. ver alternative. Oh, thank what, you, what's, what's the appropriate same president thing, for yeah, that? Yeah, same. But I just don't oh. remember when it is. But you gotta, you know, you. That's every gifts. day. It's every day. Women's Day is every day yes. in my household. I agree. The, fu the future is female, darling. It really oh. is. All right. Well, I never get to do this. I'm never the segment. That's One cool. more thing is up next. Oh wow. It's time now for one more thing. I'm going to kick it off with this. Dana's corny joke of the day. Okay. I know you've been anxiously awaiting yes. this next installment. First question. What do farmers give their wives on Valentine's Day? A hayride. Ooh, that's actually a good... Well, that's what I would ask. No, it's a farmer. hay ride. A hay, yeah, ride. A farmer gives his wife on Valentine's Day hogs and kisses. Oh, uh, mine was better. Yours is better. Fun. I'm going to add that to the repertoire. All right. Why did the banana go out with the prune? Because he had a peel? No. Uh -huh. Pretty good. Because he couldn't get a date. Uh, oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. All right, one. last one. What did one boat say to the other? One vote? Boat. Oh, boat. Let's, let's, find, let's, let's find that little creek we can go into. And nice dinghy. <laughs> These are very good guesses today. Why um, have you heard that before? What did yeah. one boat say to the other? Are you up for a little romance? Uh, hey. Whoa. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, welcome back, Bob, to Corny Joke of the Day. You should yeah, laugh first more time next I've time. Heard that. Yeah, well, it's All right, Bob, hard to laugh you're next. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, in case you wonder how uh, the quarterback of the century, Tom Brady, uh, has cashed in again on the uh, Super Bowl win, his fifth, uh, he now sells autographed photos for, catch this, $900. Hmm. And for helmets and uh, jerseys, it's over $1,000. Now, here's the, here's the real key to this. He doesn't sign it for you. He signs it in front of his reps who will guarantee you that, in fact, Brady signed the deal. <laughs> so, okay, Tom, cash in again. The question is, if you sign footballs, are they going to be inflated or not? Mm -hmm. I mean, deflated. Yeah. All right, Eric, you got a long time to fill. Really, you <laughs> going. Um, okay, so in the rush to, to trash anything Trump with General Flynn, take a look at this headline, New York Times. They kind of messed up. They, t they quoted a tweet uh, of General Flynn saying that while I accept full responsibility for my actions, I feel it's unfair that I've been made the sole scapegoat for what happened. Notice scapegoat. Well, Nancy Pelosi took it one step further earlier today. Listen. I didn't know until I heard from our colleague uh, that the uh, tweet of General Flynn today was scapegoat. And she went on to elaborate how ridiculous it was. It turns out, take a look at this, it's a fake Twitter account. Now, anyone can get caught in this, but it always, if you're going to go and like, take a shot at someone, especially in the, in the White House, make sure you, you cross your T's and dot your I's. Fake Twitter accounts. Hey, happy Valentine's Day to all of you and to all of my friends out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, that was so awkward. They know what? who they are. Wait, what was that all about? I don't know. I don't know. You're kidding, right? Is somebody is watching? You got girl? Oh, you maybe say? somebody's watching. I don't know. It was very somebody but he had <laughs> there was S after that, so there's All right, multiple. all of us are on O'Reilly later. Set your DVR so you never miss an episode of The Five. That's it for us. Special Report is next. I'm